The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today on January the 29th for the whole counsel of God, where we go through all of God's word over a course of three years. Here in 2024, we're going through the New Testament. Today, January 29th, we'll begin in Mark, the first chapter. You have your weekly insert. On your weekly insert is the prayer to receive the word, as well as the prayer of the church, the creed, and the Lord's prayer. We also include those who requested prayer here at Christ our Savior. We have the monthly Pray For Us calendar as well. We'll be finishing up the month of January here in the next few days. So let's hear God's word and pray together on this January the 29th. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Please show me now your ways, that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes to the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word, and I will declare your greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mark the first chapter, beginning with verses 1 through 8, entitled, John the Baptist Prepares the Way. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So far the word of the Lord. Mark, Mark begins by telling of First, John's call to repentance. Second, baptism. And third, eager expectation of the Messiah's coming. John warns us not to adopt worldly values and expectations. Happily, all of us who are baptized have received the promised Holy Spirit who continually forgives us, restores us, and focuses us on the splendor of Jesus' second coming. We pray. Lord, remind us of the washing that we received in holy baptism, for through it your Holy Spirit was poured into our hearts. Keep us steadfast in the hope of your glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Verses 9-11, through 11, the baptism of our Lord. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens open, and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came down from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. So far the word. The Father declares Jesus is his Son, as the Spirit descends on Jesus. Jesus' status as God's Son makes him a target of Satan's assaults. This same dynamic continues in the lives of God's children today as Satan does all that he can to tempt his baptized, the baptized. Yet our own baptism joins us to Christ and clothes us with his righteousness. We pray. Lord, you humbly stood in our stead when baptized by John and thereby gave us a share in your life, death, and resurrection. Let us therefore celebrate our place in God's family, obeying the Father, dwelling richly in the Spirit, and ever following you. In your name we pray. Amen. Now verses 12 and 13, the temptation of Jesus. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. So far the word. Jesus' successful struggle against temptation in the wilderness prefigures his final victory at the cross over our ancient foe. From the days of Adam and Eve, we have continuously fallen into Satan's traps, 
Jesus, after uniting himself with fallen humans through baptism, won a preliminary victory over the evil foe's temptations. At the cross, Jesus gained an even more wonderful victory for us. His resurrection proves that Satan cannot prevail. We pray, Lord, when we are tempted, remind us of your own struggles and trials. You have broken Satan's power once and for all. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, verses 14 and 15, Jesus begins his ministry. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So far the word. On the one hand, Jesus' message sounds much like the message of John and the prophets. On the other hand, the arrival of the Messiah fulfills prophecy and ushers in a new era. The church's message today has the same combination of new and old. True, it focuses on the age-old problem of sin and human failure. However, the gospel delivers the forgiveness of sins and with it the hope of an eternal future with God. We pray, Lord, help us to see you clearly and so believe that your kingdom is still among us. Move us to a steadfast hope for the future and to daily repentance and new life. In your name we pray. Amen. Verses 16 through 20 entitled, Jesus Calls the First Disciples. <clears throat> Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting the net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boats mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. So far the word. The first thing Jesus does in his public ministry is to call two pairs of brothers. They respond by dropping everything, following him, and becoming fishers of men. The same invitation to discipleship confronts people today. Either drop everything and in faith follow Jesus and make sacrifices, or run the risk of missing out on the kingdom. Thankfully, we are not left to our own devices in this regard. God's Holy Spirit, working through the word and sacraments, moves us, moves us to faithfully discipleship, and so also to eternal life. We pray, Lord, thank you for calling us into your kingdom, for which you declare us fit by your grace. Keep us faithful in our calling. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. And now on into verses 21 through 28, Jesus heals a man with an unclean spirit. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. So far the word. Jesus' authoritative teaching and power over the unclean spirit, it, spirits create an immediate stir among those beholding him in the early days of his ministry in Galilee. Today we often see the very same thing. People continue to be interested in and even amazed by Jesus' teaching, and yet many fail to depend on him for life and salvation. By the power of his authoritative word and spirit, however, others are indeed brought into saving faith and life. We pray, O oh Lord Jesus, move us to an unquestioning trust and mature faith in you. By the power of your word and spirit, make us steadfast in the hope, in the hope of glory. In your name we pray. Amen. 
Now, verses 29 through 34, Jesus heals many. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. So far the word. Jesus' first day of public ministry, the Sabbath, is a busy one. Given the endless series of things to which Jesus attends, we sometimes imagine that he is too busy for us and for our problems. But Jesus knows and cares for each and every one of us individually. He actually commands us to lay all of our needs before him and stands ever willing and able to help us. We pray, Lord, teach us to turn to you in every need and give us grateful hearts so that after receiving your kindness and healing, we thank and serve you. In your name we pray, amen. On to verses 35 through 39, Jesus preaches in Galilee. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed, and Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. So far the word of the Lord. Though Jesus has much more to do among the people of Capernaum, he makes time for private devotion and then insists on moving on to visit other towns and villages. His unswerving adherence to the right priority stands in sharp contrast with our tendency to lose focus, allow others to set our agenda and put lesser things above what is most important. Given our weaknesses, it is reassuring that Jesus keeps things straight. His highest goal was and is to fulfill the Father's command that he save the lost. We pray, Lord, preserve us. Preserve us from misplaced priorities. Keep us focused on your gospel, that we may know and do what is pleasing in your sight. In your name we pray. Amen. We continue in verse 40. Jesus cleanses a leper. And a leper came to him, imploring him, and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Now moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And Jesus sternly charged him and sent him away at once and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer, your clean offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded. For a proof to them. But he went out and began to talk freely about him and to spread the news so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town, but was out in desolate places and people were coming to him from every quarter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When a leper seeks Jesus' help, the Lord not only heals him, but also makes sure that the man is restored to his rightful place in society. Though we may no longer ostracize people for contracting leprosy, there are a host of ways that people experience alienation from family, church, and the larger community. But Jesus' healing will remedy such alienation. His grace makes peace with God, restores our broken relationships, and thus puts us right with one another. We pray, O oh Lord, thank you for your healing power. Hear our cries for help. Heal us according to your wisdom, and then move us to tell others what you have done. In your name we pray. Amen. We continue in prayer on the 29th day of the month. We pray that God would strengthen our faith so that his word has free course in our congregations and in our homes. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. 
as well as Art and Rick, Clifford and Helen, Mary Ann, Karen, Jane, Marilyn, Chris, and Colleen. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will and sustain them until the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know that we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.